بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. I would like to welcome our audience who are joining this webinar. It's going to be about the modern solutions for sustainable cities. This webinar is organized and supported by Arab Council for Sustainable Energy. That is a part of Arab Union for Sustainable Energy. Uh, we will have uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Ashraf Abdelaziz later on to, he's the Secretary General for uh, Arab Union for Sustainable Development and Environment. Uh, we are glad here to have uh, our uh, lovely esteemed speakers uh, from different uh, you know, sectors. Uh, we will start our first session. Uh, with our uh, sp speaker, uh, Mr. Engineer Nasser Khrebat. Uh, he is uh, Deputy Director General for the Planning and Design at the Public Authority for Housing Welfare. He will talk to us about the smart and sustainable cities visions for the Public Authority for Housing uh, Welfare. Uh, Mr. Nasser, uh, we are glad to have you with us and the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to thank you for giving us this opportunity uh, to shed some light on our visions, our projects, and also to listen to see the different uh, ideas and share uh, and learn from uh, uh, everybody about uh, the topic. Uh, uh, I'm going to share my presentation to uh, uh, start explaining. I'm going to explain a little bit who we are. We are the Public Authority for Housing Welfare. We are uh, a public entity. Uh, basically, in, in, in Kuwait, uh, if you get married, you apply your entitled to a unit. So the government uh, created this entity. Uh, and uh, we don't only provide units. We build complete communities. Uh, so we build all, all infrastructures. Uh, from roads to stormwater, sanitary, uh, uh, telecom, or whatever, electric, all, all public facilities, uh, supermarkets, police stations, and so. And then we have the different housing typologies, whether it's a house, apartment, or a plot, uh, or a apart house, apartment, or a, a plot, uh, an empty land, and then the people will build it by themselves. And uh, we've built, you know, uh, over over 160,000 units so far. And, and, and this number is continuing and uh, an access of $20 billion worth of construction already completed. This is not counting what's currently is being built in the tendering stage. Uh, our idea is to, you know, and, and uh, this is one of the slides that I really like is that we don't want to build only do dormitories. It's not only residential areas. It's, you know, what are the job creation opportunities for those cities? You know, what are the landmarks? What are this, you know, the cognitive recognition when you want to remember about the city? What, what's its program? What's the smell? You know, when you want to take a selfie, you know, what's the community identity? This is something that, that we are aspiring to create in our new projects. Of course, these are some of our projects, uh, whether it's in the different uh, 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 phases. Uh, there are some smaller towns and there are some larger cities. And as the queue started getting longer, we started to make larger and larger cities. And hence, we have to be creative. Uh, and, and just to explain the size of the projects in the, the, that are in the pipeline, these are the metropolitan area of Kuwait City, Barcelona, and these are other uh, uh, cities. And this is the size in square kilometers of our projects. Uh, and this is composing our uh, cities in, uh, on top of those. So this is basically doubling the size of Kuwait or you know, eight times the size of Barcelona or, or so. So this is quite massive, very, very massive and very challenging. And you know, if we look at only one topic, energy, if we go business as is, we require additional 35,000 megawatts. This is only of energy. I'm not talking about uh, any other, uh, the other resources. And that means we will burn 1 million barrels a day uh, to, uh, for the energy. So, you know, basically our main source of income is oil uh, and instead of selling it, we're burning it. So we have to be, you know, uh, you know, so when we talk about sustainability and talking about being smart, this is 
our livelihood at stake and we have to be very very uh, creative and how to uh, you know resolve creating creating uh, those projects in those cities uh, there was a vision by his highness uh, the late emir uh, sheikh sabah al ahmed that by 2030 we'll have up to 15 15% uh, of uh, renewable er energy in, uh, in, in the country. So as a public authority for housing welfare, we took many initiatives for achieving that goal. First of all, every public facility under construction now has at least 20% renewable energy. Uh, we have uh, around uh, 80, 80 something building already completed, uh, 80 something under construction and uh, uh, around four or 500 uh, the tendering stages and then thousands are coming and, um, and these are not small buildings these are quite massive size of buildings you're talking about supermarkets police stations and so um, also we have started before you know embarking on those projects created a smart sustainable home uh, we've, we've designed it we've built it and this is for research purposes and i'm going to discuss a little bit later on and then uh, you know, using uh, renewable energies in the homes, new zoning codes and specifications and smart cities and, and uh, district pooling and waste networks in the new cities. This is, these are some of the uh, out of the box things that I were trying to impl implement in our projects. This is uh, to shed some light on our targets. Again, these are, uh, uh, you know, especially the ones that are, uh, you know, under construction or completed, these are actual numbers. The projected this is our aspiration this is only the public facilities under completion uh, these are some of the projects uh, this is Jabal Ahmed city this is the smart home that it's already completed and it has sensors it has photo photovoltaic uh, uh, I guess uh, uh, you know and, uh, it's it's mainly for research purposes and uh, you know we can share the website and share all the information uh, any researcher who's interested in getting any data, you know, uh, we are more than happy to provide uh, the, the link for, for this house. And uh, and we took we took this as the first step, and then we started implementing on all of the public facilities. Again, these are some of the facilities that we are building. This is our Mutla project, 100 square kilometer. That's quite massive, already completed. Now it's, we're tendering the public facilities, which has also, uh, uh, like I said, photovoltaic and so. These are some of our projects. I'm not going to go in details. Uh, this is uh, Sabah Ahmed City. Uh, we have completed the public facilities. Uh, this is West Abdullah, also complete in the, in, the, in the completion process. This is East Taima, also completed 500 houses. And this is under construction, 10,000 houses. And uh, this is a, uh, East, East uh, Sabah Ahmed. This is, we're going to sign soon the contract, maybe within, hopefully within the next few weeks. 1,200 houses approximately. This is 60 square kilometer. We will tender for construction. Um, and this was designed by Foster and Partners. This project, South Side Abdullah, this is the first smart city that we are aspiring to uh, to build in our, our uh, this is the first smart city. And uh, this is a, a interesting project because it's a government to government between the government of Kuwait and the government of South Korea, in which we are trying to uh, to make it a smart city. And basically we want to use technology to enhance people's lives. This is, this is what we are hoping to do. Again, uh, uh, what we are targeting is that, you know, smart mobility, smart utility, smart welfare environment, and so. There are smart elements in Kuwait, don't, don't get me wrong, you know, that, uh, that it's not, there aren't, but the, the issue is that we want to create integration. Uh, and instead of, instead of having different silos of each, uh, each uh, service, no, we, we have one center, what we call IOC or Integrated Operating Center. This would be the, the brain of the city and everything is linked to that. This will save a lot of money uh, and this will have all, all, all of the different stakeholders have, uh, I guess, uh, joint efforts instead of have scattered efforts. And this will enable the government to have better management of its resources and the citizens to have a better connection to the city and, uh, and also uh, citizens to the government itself. Uh, again, our, our target is not to be smart for the sake of being smart. It's either there is well, you know, uh, economic benefit or there is a social benefit. So we have identified you know, the, 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 the different uh, services that we have to upgrade and we have to redefine the new services 
and and those uh, you know are various uh, services that you are uh, aspiring. Sorry, I'm going a little bit fast because of the timing. Um, again, just to give some of the services that we are targeting, and uh, as you know, especially in the infra infrastructure, you know, if currently and if, if the city is not smart. Uh, you know, if there is any leakage, especially under the ground, you wouldn't know until there's a sinkhole or there is a leakage outside, but if it's under the ground until that forward, the disaster happens. Uh, and this is costly, uh, maybe lives, uh, and, and definitely it will be cost, uh, the financial cost. But if there is sensors across cities, if there is any leakage, this will be instantly detected and can be fixed. Uh, again, you talk about uh, smart mobility, uh, you talk about the, the, the roads, and smart lights, uh, smart traffic lights, and stress. Uh, this also will will have a, a better flow of traffic instead of waiting at a traffic light, and it will take five and ten minutes. And there's a long queue of cars. And the other line, you know, uh, the other way, there is only one car, and it's you know, it's green for a long time because it's not smart. So this is some of the things that we are aspiring to do. Uh, the integrated operating center. Again, this is a, a very very important. Thing that is the brain of the city that uh, also we can have it as a data data basically data center for the city and can be also backup for you know especially down with this COVID-19 COVID and uh, you know people have started relying more and more on uh, you only use your phones on using uh, the, inter the internet of things and so so this this definitely will ease and up, ease ease up for the different stakeholders in using uh the the, the uh, internet of things um, again uh, there is a lot of uh, things that we are targeting and uh, all of this it's uh, you know we have completed the design and now we are in the tendering stages uh so hopefully all soon will be uh, this is a picture of the one of the operating centers that we are uh, tar uh, putting in our cities and uh, some of the this is the what we call waste networks this is like like us by suction in the higher density areas uh leak detection uh, also uh targeting we are in the higher density areas we are having what we call district cooling this will uh, minimize up to 40 uh, percent uh, of energy and also create a, a new uh, economy a new new job opportunities with that with the uh with the with this new networks um all of this, you know, uh, falls under uh, what we call the National Development Plan of Kuwait. We have a National Economic Development Plan, and one of the main silos is new, new and up, um, up, uh, state-of-the-art uh, infrastructure. Also, Kuwait Master Plan. We have a master plan since the 50s that targets 30 or 40 years. Uh, this is uh, also an alignment, and of course, the SDGs, the United Nations SDGs, whether it's uh, SDG number 11 or the other SDGs that also we are having in mind in building our cities. Uh, uh, thank you very much again. And uh, I hope I shed some light on, on uh, our uh, projects and how smart cities and how sustainability definitely will have its own benefits, uh, 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 whether it's on our, uh, on our social lives or on our economies. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, Engineer Naso, for what you gave us uh, about the shiny, you know, vision of uh, the public authority of housing. Uh, for uh, what what will you do for uh, our new city? Uh, I hope you can achieve it without any challenges in the future uh, to, to reach uh, what we expect from this uh, from this project. Uh, thank you, Engineer Nasser, and uh, we thank you for what you. Uh, gave us and inshallah you will be with us in discussion panel uh, for the end uh, at, at the end of this uh, session one thank you engineer nasser right now we'll move to uh, mr uh, martin uh, cabal uh, he is uh, uh, a former mayor of uh, copenhagen uh, in denmark and he's a head of smart mobility in uh, denmark uh, hi, Mr. Uh, Martin, and we are glad to have you with us, uh, sharing uh, your uh, experience and your knowledge uh, to talk to us about the sustainable mobility, the bicycle as the future of the urban uh, transport. Uh, floor is yours, Mr. Martin, and uh, we are glad to uh, hear from you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the introduction and uh, the invitation to be here today. I'm very, very honored. I'll just share my screen so you have that. 
Um, yes. Um, let, let, let's start with uh, a simple zero because that is the aim for Copenhagen. The aim for Copenhagen in becoming carbon neutral in 2025. This is one of the backgrounds of everything Copenhagen is doing these years, including on mobility and transport. The aim to be carbon neutral is an overarching aim for Copenhagen, and it has to be reached in just four years time. It's an ambitious target. It's the most ambitious target for any uh, capital of the world, but it is possible. It was set uh, 12 years ago, and since then, the, uh, up to the COP15 conference in Copenhagen. And since then, it has been the goal for Copenhagen on sustainability uh, and climate change. So zero tons emissions in 2025. And the way it has to be done, uh, to, uh, the two most important things here uh, are energy production and transport. Energy production and consumption means in Copenhagen, heating. We are a cold country, uh, we need heating. Uh, for our uh, residential and commercial areas. And of course, the next thing is transport. And here, um, the, the bicycle is a key component in solving this solution. But let me start with another, with, with a question. How many of you would actually build your house like this? The huge garage in the middle that takes center stage. And then you have a bedroom, a kitchen, dining room, but the center of it all is the garage. My best guess is not a lot would choose to use to, uh, to build their residential area like this. But why is it then that we have chosen to build our streets and cities like it? This is an American highway, but highways all over the world look like this. Highways all over the world look uh, in, in streets and roads look, uh, leading into our cities look like this. A lot of space is being used only for cars. That's because we have asked the wrong question for so many years. We've asked the question of how many cars can we move down the street? And when we do that, then our streets will look like this. Two car lanes in, in the city center, two car lanes, uh, space enough for parking, and then a little bit of space for walking for the pedestrians. That is the wrong question. That is so 20th century. We need to ask the, the question of the 21st century. That is namely how many people can we move down the street? And when we start asking that question, then our streets will look like this. Space enough for public transport. Here I've taken a tram. It could be anything that you'd like. Still, there is space enough for a car lane because we have people who can transport themselves um, on a bicycle or public transport. And we do have a lot of logistics. Then we have a broad bicycle lane and we have, more than, and we have space enough for the uh, pedestrians as well. This street has a capacity of up to 10 times the, the capacity of this street. So it's not a matter of a war between bikes and cars. No, it's simply a matter of efficiency, of using the space of our cities to the best of our abilities. And that means using them on the most space efficient uh, mode we can, namely public transport and bicycle. Now, a lot of you will say, when I talk about becoming a bicycle city, we are not Copenhagen. We are not Amsterdam. Well, let me take and tell you this. Copenhagen was not Copenhagen. This is Copenhagen, one of the central historical squares in the 1950s. This was what it was used to. To the left, we have a fountain that was erected to a king's uh, a coronation in the 16th century. Um, but it was more or less covered by all the cars. No space for commercial life no space for people, no space for anything but, well, car parking. This is what it looks like today. We have space, still we have the fountain in the middle of the square. Now it's being used for young people sitting around drinking coffee. There is a Swedish burger chain. There is a couple of cafes um, of all types. And you have commercial life, you have some shops. But what's interesting here is that today you have just as much parking as we had here. The difference is that at this point, the parking was for cars. Now the parking is for bikes. And they take up so much little space compared to the cars that now there is space for all the other activities of the commercial life. Is this something new? No, 
cities all over the world have been built like this for, th for hundreds and thousands of years. I visited also many cities in the Arab countries, which, which look like more and more like this than this, thankfully. Because the focus on human scale, the focus on urban life is key to human development. Another example is this street in the center of Copenhagen. Um, as you can see, what, this is what it looked like when I grew up. My mom definitely would not let me go to school on my own. It was too dangerous. We lived in this neighborhood. What's interesting is that you see in the middle of it, the bus line 5A. And for more than 100 years, it has had the same route. Um, so the city has excellent data on how this, the, uh, uh, the public transport here goes. From horse-driven carriages now to electric buses. But what was interesting was that in 2005, a person from the city administration went into the archives and found the bus schedule of 1905. He compared it to the present day schedule. They were identical. So 100 years of progress meant nothing has happened. So something had to be changed. And the city council closed the street for 50 meters, only 50 meters, and forbade all through traffic for private cars. And then rebuild the street. So the street now looks like this. The picture from before was taken from the other side, but you, I know you, know, you, you get it. So today there's one car lane combined with bus lane. There are very broad promenades that is being used uh, from a lot of the people living in the, in the district and the neighborhood for a hangout space for urban life. This is one of the most multicultural, multinational districts of Copenhagen, a district of 80,000 people um, with all types of urban life and nationalities, a great place to live and visit. Um, but this one is what it looks like today. Totally remade. It was rebuilt for 5 million euro, all in all. This, the, these are the results. A 60% reduction in the number of cars, thereby also by the number of emissions that these cars emit a 60% increase in the number of bicycles, meaning that the bicycle lane here is now the busiest in the world with 48,000 bicycles in average per day. And 165% increase in the number of pedestrians, mostly older people who now feel safe again and younger people, uh, kids who can walk to school on their own and who have no problems in, in that being safe. And then you have 5% more passengers in the public transport. But because it also runs faster, then the city actually saves money. This is a money-saving project. As I said, the city spent 5 million euro on the reno renovation of the street. But every year, the city saves from 600 to 800,000 euro in, in better and cheaper public transport. So the money has already been paid back. And the city now runs the street with a surplus. This is a good business case, as well as good for sustainability and good for the commuters. And then there are all the people who just enjoy city life. 15 times as many people just hang out, drink coffee, meet with friends, and just enjoy their life on these streets. This is well, uh, a, a very good example of how when you do a traffic project, it can also benefit urban life and, and uh, the human scale again. So this is what uh, a morning rush hour looks like at 7.30. As you see, there are a couple of cars, there's a bus, and then you have a lot, a lot of bicycles. As I said, this is the busiest bicycle lane in the world, 48,000 bikes per day in average. The reason for this is how the streets of Copenhagen have been rebuilt. We have three tiers of uh, streets, each separated with a curb. There are many ways of separating the bicycle lanes from the streets or from the car lanes and from the pedestrians. Copenhagen has chosen curbs. Other cities have chosen bollards or the small turtles that you can easily drill into the, the, uh, the asphalt. There are many ways of doing it. But when you separate and protect the bicycles from the cars, then it becomes safe for, in this case, a mother to transport her kids to kindergarten in a cargo bike. And it becomes safe for the pedestrians because they don't risk being run over by the bicycles. We don't want that either. So the result today, when you look at Copenhagen, this is the modal share. 62% of all commuting in Copenhagen is being done by bicycle, a quarter by, by public transport and 9% by cars. 
62%. Those numbers are unprecedented in the whole world for, for, a, for a bigger city. And that's only possible because it's now safe uh, and feels safe to get transport around the city. That is the most important factor for anybody to transport themselves. Has this been expensive? Well, over the last 16 years, these are the total capital investments for the city of Copenhagen. 280 million euro, meaning more than 10 bridges, more than 500 kilometers of protected bike lanes, green bicycle routes and super cycle highways to the suburbs. Incidentally, 280 million euro is the same amount that cost it cost to build a three kilometer car bypass tunnel north of Copenhagen. I'm not going to tell you who, how you're going to spend your money. I'll just say these numbers are pretty significant and they show very clearly what you can get for your money if you want to make that choice. But it's of course all up to the citizens and city councils and governments to decide. I know what I will choose. And then when we talk about finances, these are the numbers that the Danish Ministry of Finance uh, actually have published now. That every kilometer you choose to, mo to move yourself has a, a consequence on the on city and government finances. Every kilometer that you choose to drive in a car costs society 78 euro cents. The reason for this is that car infrastructure is much more expensive than bicycle infrastructure and the cars pollute. But every kilometer you transport yourself on a bike more gains society 68 cents. The reason for this is again, the price of infrastructure and that a bicycling population is a healthier population. We stay fit longer. That means less costs for obesity. That means less costs uh, for cardiovascular diseases, which of course gain society. It may not be government money in all countries, but it's still money for the citizens that are being spent that could have been saved instead. The staggering difference here of one euro 44 per kilometer is something that research has shown is valid for cities all over the world. One final thing I'll mention is that this is only also about logistics. This is a German American um, uh, logistics company, DHL, which is now transforming itself from being car oriented into bike oriented. This is Hamburg and Berlin, where uh, the, the, this picture is taken from Hamburg and where the, um, the, the goods and the parcels we all get from online shopping is now being delivered in a cargo bike. It can also be here in Copenhagen, where we can say that you can literally transport everything from before the cradle to after the grave. Here it's transport between hospitals. And here it's the a company called the Funeral Ladies, a small company of a few people being employed, but still jobs being created by um, a funeral lady who uh, wanted to make sure that Copenhageners didn't have to be transported in a van, in a hearse, on their final journey to their resting place. Because as she said, why should they, when they're the rest of their life have been tra transporting themselves on a bicycle? So she invented this hearse. And today this can be seen together with other hearses like this in her company, um, be being transporting uh, people to their final destination. As I've said to my family, they can choose the ceremony they will have when I die, as long as I'm being transported on a bike hearse to, to, uh, to my final resting place. Today, she has created a, a, a job and financial success, employing a lot of people and employing people who previously were unemployed and simply has created innovation and new business opportunities. Because this is also what it's all about. Innovation, business opportunities, and of course, a healthier and better city. Because basically, this is not about the, the bicycle. This is not about mobility. This is about better, and more sustainable cities. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Morton, uh, for your uh, presentations. And uh, you now encourage us to visit uh, Copenhagen, you know, to see this uh, interesting, you know, uh, lifestyle uh, that you have already. Uh, and uh, it's very, really interesting uh, by numbers, by cost, by everything. And uh, we hope you can stay with us for the discussion panel so we have more uh, discussion about that.
thank you, Mr. Uh, Martin. And now we'll move to the world third subject uh, that will be given by Engineer Mohammed Al Taani. He is the Secretary General of, of the Arab Renewable Energy Authority and the Vice President of the Jordan Renewable Energy Associations. Uh, we are glad to have you, Mr. Mohammed, and uh, the floor is yours uh, to start your presentation. Uh, thank you, uh, Your Excellency uh, Engineer Salim Al Ajmi, for uh, my invitation and uh, uh, for all uh, distinguished uh, speakers for this very important subject for all Arab countries and its global wise issue. Uh, my, my presentation, uh, I should, uh, I should uh, focus on the green generation because you will listen uh, many times about the green generation. We see a good example from Kuwait. We see uh, a good example from Copenhagen. Uh, and what we are looking uh, for in, uh, uh, for the concept of a smart city. And excuse me, it might it's uh, something in Arabic, but it's, uh, I will speak in English. Uh, for sustainability, uh, it is to reach uh, security of energy, security of water, and security of food at the same time uh, for uh, to uh, protect the environment. And this is the goals of uh, United uh, Nations uh, Sustainable Goals. And uh, uh, our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam already mentioned uh, before 1,000, for uh, 400 years ago, about all people around uh, the world are partners uh, in three, water, uh, energy, and, and food. And this that's why usually it's not new, the sustainability goals, because it's already mentioned uh, in, uh, in uh, 1,400 years ago. And, and uh, this slide, you can, I, I bought just uh, a sample uh, from India. And uh, you can see the animals uh, here is uh, contribute for uh, pushing uh, this uh, uh, crops, and uh, you know India one of the most uh, uh, high population with China. Sustainability uh, is a big problem now nowadays uh, because uh, due to uh, COVID nineteen uh, pandemic, we feel we we lose a lot of uh, agriculture land here in, in Jordan. I have two different slides, one from Jordan and uh, one from Netherlands. Sustainability, you can see in Netherlands, while people who, here, not the government, already attack the agriculture land, as you see, uh, see in non-sustainable. And this is a lead uh, alarm, and we should think carefully in all Arab country, or in our, in our uh, Arab world about uh, the smart cities and how to make uh, a good implementation for that. Uh, Maslow uh, already uh, 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 pyramid of, of needs already revised by uh, an, another people. And uh, I bought this because uh, it's related to uh, grid, to the smart grid, because electric city now is uh, the infrastructure for all uh, in the war, and we should take care about what we mentioned before that the people are partners in water, uh, food, and energy. And this is the minimum requirements for the human being. While you cannot achieve that, you, you cannot achieve the sustainability goals. And that's mean we should, as mentioned many times in Quran, we should take care about our, our children and this is, is uh, the, the future. Sustainability and education, uh, education and economy, we, you can see uh, when there is sustainability, you can, uh, uh, with knowledge and science, and you can uh, be rich and powerful, uh, power, uh, power, and this is, will be grow the economy to reach a green economy. And uh, the, uh, the other side, you can see the poorness, backwardness, and uh, this is unsustainable and the economy will be bare. Uh, you know, energy is the core of economy and that's why uh, uh, 
energy nowadays is a hot issue. And while uh, all, all countries around the, the world are uh, taking uh, the issue for zero ca carbon, uh, in Arab country, we have not that much responsibility for that. Heavy industry come from uh, G8 country or G20, and they, they should contribute, and they should be money for the third, uh, third world country due to uh, environmental and to the uh, heavy industry in this country. And that's why uh, the, the China lead the country of renewable energy, uh, and they have a good uh, agreement uh, uh, maybe one month ago between uh, United States and China to, to improve the situation and to, uh, to reach zero carbon maybe by 2050. And this is good single for all uh, global wise issue. And civilization and uh, uh, for, for the people uh, themselves can depend on natural resources and also to, be, to, be do, uh, to be do, uh, depend more on renewable energy. And we should use the proper, uh, the proper use of energy and we should establish uh, uh, a good infrastructure for smart uh, cities and that uh, should use renewable energy, a smart grid, electric vehicle, and this is, will be uh, uh, essential for our future. Um, global wise, uh, we, we should think about electrical cars. Uh, we, we, uh, we expected to reach three, 300 uh, million electrical cars by 20, uh, 2040, and th this will reach the green transportation, which is one of the main infrastructure for uh, smart cities. And uh, uh, just uh, maybe this year, we, we reach the, the fifth industrial revolution. We'll see more, much advanced cooperation, interaction between a human machine, a process and system for maximum performance of optimization uh, in this, uh, in this ind industrial revolution. Uh, just, uh, I, I will fast about renewable energy uh, uh, development worldwide. The first economy crisis was in 2008, uh, due to increase in, in, in oil prices at that time and pushing for the climate uh, change. And uh, also uh, another uh, uh, economy crisis uh, the last uh, year. And this uh, lead the, uh, the G8 uh, countries to uh, both uh, most in, uh, design economy recovery package included in green, uh, simultaneous uh, measures, and this encourage uh, renewable energy industry in, in uh, uh, G8 uh, uh, country, and this also lead this uh, the last year to uh, to push about the fifth industrial revolution, and the Arab uh, lose in two uh, economic crises because most uh, 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 more than eight to ten. Uh, Arab countries are all uh, oil producer or natural gas producer about one trillion in two uh, economic crises. This is the global energy. We we think now about renewable energy, but we should take care about renewable energy. It's sustainable, but it's still uh, contribution in the base load. It's not contribution and uh, and peak load, not in the basic load. And that's why still the importance of oil and gas uh, uh, will continue until we uh, solve the storage for, for uh, renewable energy sources, uh, despite we can have uh, it continuously from hydropower uh, energy. Uh, solar energy be becomes the, uh, the, the new king of electricity as it was in 1979 Cost uh, seventy-five dollar nowadays. It's just point five dollar cent, and we are placing our country are placing uh, with the direct free energy with cold weather, uh, uh, comparing with cold weather in Europe, for example, uh, needs eighty uh, eighty percent energy for space heating, and this is uh, we call it Nami min Allah, and we are in the sun and the main source of all kind of energy. That's mean. Uh, the Middle East or the Arab country 
are plenty and the main source of energy from a traditional source of energy or from renewable source of energy. But we need kind of a smart uh, management for that and we'll have a, a, a good plan for our future. And in general, this is, uh, you can see the investment looking in the Arab uh, countries to reach 700 billion by, uh, by 2050. Uh, Jordan already passed uh, one giga uh, point uh, 200 mega by 2020. King Saudi Arabia ex expected to reach uh, uh, 60 giga from renewables. And also we're looking to contribute in er energy efficiency and encourage it to reach uh, the solution for energy, water and environment. The total expected electricity demand in Arab country will reach 300 gigawatt by 2050. And this is the strategy and the strategy of the Arab Renewable Energy Commission, the proper use of energy and energy uh, management, uh, energy mapping for uh, energy mix uh, and for energy security and continuity of energy for Arab country. And this is we target by 2030 to reach 40% from energy efficiency or energy saving then renewable energy and we should use electric vehicle and we should plan for smart cities without uh, planning for the smart cities it's there is a big problem for sustainability and in, in all country in the world especially in the arab country five uh, industrial revolution we should focus in the green generation because our green generation uh, need also green school to reach the a green culture and uh, to, to reach a, a green building. And the green buildings is the infrastructure for the smart cities, which is should uh, depend more in the green energy and the green transportation to reach a, a green resonance uh, to, and that lead to the green economy to, uh, for, uh, after that we reach the green government. And this is the best solution for uh, all uh, energy, water, and environment in grid solution and reduce gas uh, emission. Uh, in, in ARIC, Arab Renewable Energy Commission, we put uh, uh, for smart sustainability for, for all. That means the smart energy, which is the twins of energy, of renewable energy and energy efficiency, and a smart grid, a smart cities, and a smart e vehicle. And this depends on. Uh, Internet of Things and uh, uh, many other, the, the, the world of digitalization uh, and the E word for the fourth energy. Now it's the fifth energy generation revolution and artificial uh, intelligence are the entry of sustainability for the expectation of a primary requests will be done in 2050 compared uh, uh, from energy requirements nowadays and more demand of electricity uh, will come uh, from uh, renewable energy. That means the increase, the different, the difference and in increase of electricity demand will depend on renewable energy. But you can see it. We cannot cancel the the, the domestic uh, source of energy until we can solve the the problem of uh, 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 energy storage. And this is still need a time or to shift for hydrogen and many Arab countries like Saudi Arabia, like uh, uh, Egypt, like uh, uh, Morocco are working now on a green hydrogen, which is the best solution uh, with renewable energy to solve the problem of energy storage. Uh, smart city uh, general course concept is to have the legislation uh, also to to avoid uh, to attack the agricultural land and uh, randomly uh, building everywhere and to reduce the the, the area of, of 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 building and for example if you can compare uh, arab house with the west western house it's maybe 10 times of that of that house and in Islam, we should be in, in the middle. And this should uh, like uh, to, to get a good lesson from that because uh, we have uh, extra space and this is for nothing. And the best use for water, energy, uh, and environment 
uh, also with, with the food. We can planning for uh, smart cities uh, to reach, uh, how to reach, uh, to be self-independent. And this is uh, uh, a good remark from COVID-19 because many Arab countries are uh, suffering from the source of food and some also uh, suffering from uh, the, the leak of, of uh, uh, energy, electricity uh, demand. And we should also think about the circular economy uh, and to not to reduce the green coverage in, in, in smart cities less than 50 percent. You can see everywhere in, in, in West country like Berlin, like Kiev, like Barcelona, it's different. But now here, uh, for example, you can have a Jordan. Jordan uh, uh, people are concentrated in, on one fifth of the land of Jordan. And this is, I think, a big problem. We should uh, think about uh, a, a new cities, uh, modern cities, uh, equivalent or parallel to existed uh, cities in Jordan, and also similar for other Arab countries. We should think about uh, existed uh, smart cities. Uh, we have a good example. I visited Barcelona many times. Kiev uh, in Spain, Kiev in Ukraine, Leward in, in, in Holland, and many Switzerland cities. And we have a good example, Grugigen in Holland, uh, in, in Netherlands, a city in Kazakhstan, Fiber in, uh, in Germany, and also from Arab country, we have a good example from Abu Dhabi, Dubai, uh, Egypt, and Morocco. And the, 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 bid, uh, the uh, important indication for the smart cities is the it's uh, expensive infrastructure, but it's the best for uh, environment, healthy, and the quality of life. And this is uh, people will uh, depend more on, on renewable energy as a clean source of energy, and they have uh, a good food. And this is uh, make people are confident about uh, their uh, their country and their their life. Uh, just I, I, I want to throw about the main pieces to classify uh, uh, smart cities that essential to, to city progress, the human capital, uh, social cohesion, economy, uh, the system, environment, mobility, urban uh, planning, international relation, technology, and uh, digitalization. Uh, and you can see human capital, that's mean uh, uh, inhabitants them uh, self should contribute uh, in the decision maker while we are planning for uh, a smart city. And this is, I should keep it, uh, uh, it's, in, it's in Arabic. We should take care about our inhabitants and how to, to have uh, projects for uh, smart cities and how to have a dialogue between the, the people and the government and to think about the partnership between public and the private sector, and also to change the behavior, the behavior of people. Because uh, uh, you see in Copenhagen, uh, they have uh, biking, a lot of biking, but in, in Arab country, all of us are using uh, his own car and you can, uh, one house uh, have maybe 10 cars, and this is not uh, uh, too much uh, comparing each other. Uh, for smart sustainability, we should, uh, uh, think I already just want to uh, to to focus in uh, smart energy is essential for the smart cities, and uh, I already mentioned about electric vehicle, hydrogen vehicle, and just you can see uh, the capital of Tesla company reach uh, 700 billion, a smart grid for electric city, water, and energy transition, and all of that should be smart management. And smart uh, should be specified, measurable, achievable, realistic time boundaries. Uh, you can see just to, to compromise, this is in, in Erbit in north, uh, north uh, of Jordan. And the other is in, in Lewarden. And you can see, and already now improved this, uh, this because I already uh, said that to a minister of, uh, of environment because it's not good 
uh, for uh, the environment, and you can see the difference. Uh, we, we should have, take care about people. We have Biking. one. We have one minute, uh, Engineer Mohammed. Yes, uh, yes. I advise you to to go to international uh, uh, to uh, de uh, the design charity ways to uh, envision sustainable future for Rub Rugma. We have a good workshop. It was in 2008 in Jordan, International Conference on Renewable Energy Approaches for Special Environment Increase. And you can think how the way they think to, to establish uh, their smart cities and the way it's totally different in the Arab country. And again, uh, how to, uh, uh, to have a green generation to reach the green economy. Uh, this is what I have in hand. Thank you. And think green, go green, green generation, green school. Thank you again. Bye. Uh, thank you, Engineer Mohammed, uh, for your uh, presentations. And you show us uh, the integrated factors that can take our uh, countries toward the green economy and uh, the role of uh, green generation. It's very interesting what you have uh, given. And uh, we'd like you to stay with us uh, for the discussion panel. So we'll have more some uh, discussion uh, during that time. Thank you, Engineer Mohammed.